What's going on everyone? Juicebags here and welcome back to some Dungeon Defenders 2. It has been far, far, far too long since I played around a little with the Squire's Cannonballs. So that is what we're going to do today. We are here in the Coral Reef Town on Chaos 10 and we're going to bust out the Heavy Cannonballs. So we are using Destruction, Mass Destruction and Heavy Cannonball with Piercer Servo, Defense Rate and Anti-Melee. Now we got two areas that are just perfect for the heavy cannonballs. We've got this area here, and then we've got this area right here as well. Now, I think they're going to work, but, you know, this, of course, with the curve, with the turn in the lane, is just not quite as good for those heavy cannonballs. So let's go ahead and just start building right here. I'm uh, going to go with a training dummy right about there. Let's give it uh, a little reflect beam action, of course. Uh, something like that. Now, I got mixed emotions on where to build these guys. If I build them up on the rail, they'll get a little bit more line of sight here. So I'm thinking maybe come up top here. Uh, but with that in mind, I'm probably going to need to get like my buff beam down first. So let's throw down a buff beam. Uh, of course, we are using diffusion on those buff beams uh, to get a little bit extra range out of those cannons. And let's just go something like this. Put four of them up here. Now we do want to fully buff these guys. So we're going to give them uh, some reflect beam action and a boost star as well. For the reflect, we can just go like that. Uh, it's got all the pylons on it uh, is why we're using it there. And then we'll just throw in a boost star. That's 260 DU. So that should work out. That's going to put us at 780 D if I do a similar build to that uh, in every lane. Uh, right here, let's see. This one is kind of a good one for the cannons. Let's uh, give it the training dummy and the reflect beam, of course. And then how do we want to do this one? I think we'll do three and then one. Actually, we could probably just do two and two and make uh, the reflect placement a little bit smoother. Not that it's going to be a major issue anyway. Let's do it like that. Now we are going to want to give it uh, that diffusion and we're going to give it all the pylons as well. And I think we can just put uh, that right there and kind of get a little double double whammy on the reflect action and then we'll just throw a boost star there in the back so that's going to leave me uh what another 280 to get things wrapped up and i think we will go um we'll put our training dummy there uh, with the reflect and then i think we can just do the same thing we'll just go two and two something like this And that's going to leave 20, I believe, which is should be perfect because we do need some reflect beam protection uh, against the core in those hex throwers. So, yeah, let's do it. Something like that. And then uh, that leaves 20 DU for a reflect beam here. Uh, we all know that hex throwers like to get uppity. This gives it a little protection from any hex throwers or javelin throwers that come from this lane. Now we are, um, we've got coverage for flyers, but we are going to be weak for flyers. So with that in mind, uh, I am going to want to keep an eye on the flyer situation. Let's just throw a few upgrades in, uh, something like that and let it fly here. So as I mentioned, just going to have to pay attention to flyers on this one. We will get shots fired into them, uh, with the cannons. However, it is, uh, less than ideal. There's no doubt there. Now the cannons, these cannon shots here, we're just going to lose those heavy cannonballs. Or actually, we're not. They are rolling up and over, so we are getting those heavy cannon shots. I thought we were going to lose those there, but uh, oh no, it is uh, working out just fine. Now what's happening over here? We're losing a few down into the death pit there, but not too many. If you look at the number of heavy cannons going... We're just not losing too many of them there, so it's not awful. Got a few lost ones. Now, this is just the ideal lane right here, so that's just going to get wrecked uh, without any issue here. 
it uh, creates quite the, the little bowling lane. There. There's just a lot of heavy cannonballs that are rolling on through there. Now, you see we're down to 70 mobs now. Of course, uh, wave one being the the wave with the least amount of mana, but also, uh, you know, the easiest assortment of enemies. It looks like we got uh, a little completion on our defender pass. Kind of weird how it kind of wigs out the sound when that pops up. It's like it mutes the background sound. I wonder if there's a fix for that. Swapping heroes. Does not look like it. All right, so it should pick back up now that the wave is uh, the wave is complete. All right, let's see. What do we want to do? Well, I think this is probably going to be our weakest lane. Let's just throw everything in here. Um, I didn't even pay attention to any flyers that time. So uh, let's actually go two ups on everything there. And then this lane should be fine, but let's just to be safe, let's throw a few upgrades in. Then now I think we'll be in a position where we'll be able to just kind of watch this area down here. This being the double lane, uh, theoretically, this should be the heaviest lane. Uh, however, I do feel like this one over here is the sketchiest lane. So heavy versus sketchy. like we are getting it was that from a daily oh that was from a daily i had uh, a daily to kill goblins um i believe that's what that um defender pass xp came from here we go we're starting to get a little build up now now the heavy cannonball of course is gonna add a little bit of penetration to the lanes and add a little bit of multi-targeting, which is quite nice. So even though the cannonball is a single target defense, we've got all of these heavies rolling out and they're just gonna just ride right through everything. Curious to see how this one winds out. I'm still very, very worried about this lane over here. Maybe I'll throw an upgrade. Let's just get one in there now. We'll throw an upgrade on that training dummy, just in case. Uh, this being the heaviest lane, I just feel like it's going to go good, though. The training dummy's doing a great job at uh, keeping its health. It's getting a little beat down now. The shark can do hit fairly hard. It looks like those goblin bombs are not bouncing back. Yeah, those ones are. But Slakelion got wrecked. We did take a little bit of damage there to our training dummy, but it did manage to stay at, you know, above half health. So throw an upgrade on that one too. You know what? Let's just go ahead and give one upgrade to all the training dummies. Now, I feel like having two upgrades on all this stuff is probably good but we still do have a lot of a lot of time left we're only on wave three let's go ahead and go one more upgrade into each of these and then we'll watch this lane once again we got this like kelly on up here but like i said he's just gonna get annihilated what cannonballs do well is their single target damage. They hit like an absolute truck. Um, additionally, being a 30 DU defense, they get a whole lot of value from upgrades. So once you get a few upgrades in, you know, the amount of power your cannons dish out is quite considerable. Keep an eye on that wall once again. I will intervene if I need to, but I'm hoping to see just how the build itself holds up. Oh, we lost a cannon. That must have been a dive bombing flyer over here. Yeah, it looks like it. We got a little AOE damage on all that stuff. I think these will survive the wave, though, so we should be all right there. Where is that siege roller coming out? Coming out back over here, taking a sweet old time. We'll make it out there eventually, though. We're going to have to get that cannon back here. 
And sadly, the worst part about that is we lost all that mana we had dumped into it. So that is the rough part. And then here comes the Siege Roller. It's popped out now. I think we got room. We got room back behind now. Let's just go ahead and uh, get this guy burned out. All right, Siege Roller down. That was the front cannon. So yeah, I'm pretty sure that was probably a dive bombing flyer. Wasn't really paying attention, but I would assume that's what it was. And let's get that cannon placed. Placed back here. Another upgrade on it. Looking pretty good most other places. We did take uh, a good bit of wall damage again. But once again, we're still staying above half health. So nothing uh, extremely urgent there. Just go ahead and slap a few upgrades in over here. We'll go one on the wall and then just spam it out for the rest of them. So wave four. Uh, once again, that's like Kellyon can be on ignore mode up there. So no big deal there. And I want to keep an eye on those dive bombers this time. They come from way, way out there, but they've got that a little bit of spawn protection versus towers. Uh, these cannons are not going to hit them, even if they do have line of sight, until they're uh, outside of that spawn zone, which is looks like it's right about here. The toughest part of the game sometime is paying attention to the minimap and watching for those flyers, but it really just is the way. Uh, there's no doubts. So we got another Siege Roller coming out on this side. That Cannon Ogre we should be able to ignore. Uh, he's just going to get blasted. Where are we at? We're at 6,000 range. Uh, that's with just using Diffusion in a range pylon. So no, um, no range mods, no range shards uh, on the cannons. And we still got over 6,000 uh, range units there. So definitely... Definitely more than enough range. The cannon ogre is already down. The siege roller has just got a really, really long road here. You can easily automate the siege rollers on this lane with just about any defense, uh, just by placing it up here. Of course, when you go and do that, then, uh, you know, just RNG and bad luck makes it so that you never get a siege roller in this lane when you do plan ahead. <laughs> we got Malthius rolling out as well. Malthius is going to hang out in the back a little bit. So let's just go ahead and bust, uh, bust up the book here. There we go. And there we go. Pretty smooth sailing other than that one flyer issue. So we got the final wave. Um, let's just dump it right here. Get those guys all beasted out and we'll let it fly. Got a warlord too. The warlord's coming from down below. I think that warlord will have to pop its bubble real quick though. We'll have to see here. Well, actually most things are distracted or no, there we go. So yeah, warlord had to pop its bubble way out there. Um, it will be really close to expired by the time it makes it to... Actually, it's already expired uh, before it even makes it to the training dummy. So, in fine shape there. No flyers yet to be alarmed about, but do want to keep an eye on them. Got a stone wolf coming. I think the stone wolf will get tore up, uh, as will the cyclone shaper. So, should have no issue there. Yeah, the Shaper just got annihilated right out of the spawn. And it looks like uh, our bosses are down. 150 mobs left. Uh, no, I haven't seen any more die bombing flyers, so... Looking pretty good there as well. Uh, 
Oh, here they come. I knew they had to get here eventually. They just, they spawn so far out and down. All right, all those dive bombers are handled. Oh, we got a few over here as well. And there we go. We're down to, uh, what, double Slakelion? Or no, we got a Plaguing Hawk on this side. Plaguing Hawk down, the Slakelion down, and we got the win. So GG's there. Pretty smooth sailing. We had that one flyer dive bomb issue. But besides that, the cannons did pretty darn good. But that will do it for now. Thanks an absolute ton for watching. Uh, hopefully everyone is having a wonderful, wonderful start to their weekend. And I will see you next time around. Take it easy.